English, Espanol, Vanus Enigma. So two days ago I changed my cover design of my YouTube channel. Hace dos días he cambiado la imagen de fondo de mi canal de YouTube. I invented this hashtag Let's Talk FE, which is inspired by Let's Talk Bitcoin. He inventado este hashtag Let's Talk FE, que está inspirado en Let's Talk Bitcoin. And as you see, it's the flag of United Nations. Y como veis, es la bandera de las Naciones Unidas. By the way, I've got the same profile picture on my Twitter account, um, Flat Earth V. Tengo la misma, uh, el mismo diseño en mi cuenta de Twitter, Flat Earth V. Then after changing this design, I noticed something strange in the search engine of YouTube. Y ese día, después de cambiar este diseño, eh, me he enterado de algo extraño en uh, la máquina de búsqueda en YouTube. So, you know, here uh, is the filter. Anyway, you type in Flat Earth, and here is the filter. You can list by upload date and creative commons and then I noticed that my videos are hidden. Ya sabéis que aquí se pone uh, flat earth o tierra plana en español y aquí filtro y ordenar por fecha o creative commons Y eso lo hice, pero mis, um, mis videos estaban escondidas. And I always, almost always include Bitcoin too in my video mix. And in, in the search Bitcoin, my videos were hidden too. Y casi siempre incluyo también el tema de Bitcoin en mis video mix. Y ahí también estaban escondidas mis videos. Ok, now uh, they appeared again at least. Uh, anyway, I put them almost always in Creative Commons. And then Upload Date these two filter options and they appeared but vale luego aparecieron pero aplicando estos dos filtros habéis visto ordenando por uh, creative commons y la fecha but if i type in flat, flat earth then uh, still, when I apply this upload date, still um, they don't appear. Only if I apply this both filters, um, they appeared again. It's strange. It's raro. Uh, Luego, más, más tarde, un día más tarde o algo, um, pongo esto en la máquina y luego el filtro, estos dos filtros por fecha, ahí todavía no ap aparecen, pero Creative Commons, uh, luego sí, pero 
no, solo de fecha, ¿no? Así que este era mi último video. So this was my last video. Mix number 81. This one is number 82. Este es el número 82. And I want to show you this email from YouTube. Um, y quiero enseñaros este email de YouTube. Normally I put all of my videos into Creative Commons license. Normalmente pongo todos mis videos en licencia de Creative Commons. But in this video it's, it was not possible. It forced me to monetize it. Pero con este video no era posible. Me han forzado de ponerlo en monetize in modo de monetization. So I'll just read what they say. Hi, Vanas Enigma. A copyright owner using content ID claimed some material in your video. This is just a heads up. Don't worry. You're not in trouble and your account standing is not affected by this. There are either ads running on your video with the revenue going to the copyright owner or the copyright owner is receiving starts about your video, video's views. Title the Video Mix number 80. I just see that here they wrote it. Um, a little different before I saved. Uh, normally I put uh, often Bitcoin in the end and here they saved the title before I saved it, uh, before I published it. So I just don't want to forget about Bitcoin so I put it uh, one moment at, at, at the beginning but then I put it into the almost to the end because I like to paste that video of hashtag BTC4 in the end normally. So just imagine <laughs> maybe just one small part of the video and they if I would monetize my videos they would get the whole money. <laughs> Así que imagina, mira, si es solo una parte pequeña del video, así que ellos consiguen el, 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 la suma total del video. Anyway, it's very complicated uh, to this monetization process and you have to have at least one one amount, I don't know exactly, like hundred dollar or something. I never earned anything. So, and the last time I checked on my Bitcoin account, uh, <laughs> zero, nothing. But I don't want to be disencouraged for that. I just do it because I like that. I like to produce video mix. And I think uh, the idea of hashtag BTC4 can really help people financially. Y la última vez, sí, que es, uh, que iba a decir, um, es muy complicado la monetization de YouTube. Yo pongo la cuenta de Twitter, QR code, and De la, la, la última vez que he comprobado nada bueno la gente tampoco todavía no conoce bitcoin así que yo lo hago más bien porque me gusta producir vídeos y de todas formas creo que el tema de hashtag btc4 puede ayudar a mucha gente económicamente but you see once again how the laws are designed to benefit these big companies. Así que ves una vez más como las leyes 
Muchas leyes están diseñadas para beneficiar las grandes empresas. The same topic, um, uh, the minimum wage, uh, yeah. El, un tema similar, el, um, la ley en del salario mínimo, and many other perverse laws, law of intellectual property, which inhibits innovation and freedom of expression, y otras leyes más, ley de la propiedad intelectual que inhibe la innovación y la libertad de expresión. So now I'm just checking how many search results are with the hashtag Let's Talk FE. Ahora estoy mirando cuántos resultados de búsqueda hay con el hashtag Let's Talk FE. And as I have shown you before, here's the filter. You click on Upload Date. This is my last video, my second last video. And most of my videos are Creative Commons. Okay, yeah. See. Um, estaba mirando en la uh, máquina de búsqueda el Let's Talk FE resultados y como habéis visto antes, ahí está el filtro, ordenar por fecha y por Creative Commons. Casi todos pongo en, si es posible, en licencia de Creative Commons. Now I notice something strange again. This is just what the so search results um just typing in let's talk FE and then go to upload date and then my video number eighty is missing. You see last video eighty one seventy nine eighty Actually, my uh, favorite video because it has much music. That one which I showed you in the email is missing. You see, it's missing. It's strange for a search results. Justo ahora veo algo raro otra vez. Uh, este es el resultado si pones ahí let's hashtag let's talk fe. Um, sí, esta tiene mucha y también números son diferentes. Aquí dice eh, 44 view, uh, vistas y en realidad si lo abras hay mucho más. Y más, uh, más importante, aplicar el filtro upload date la, por fecha y aquí falta el número 80. Aquí 81. 79. ¿Dónde está 80? Aquí debería estar 80. Esto es casi mi video favorito porque tiene mucha música. Pero es falta. Falta. Mira, son, son, son resultados muy, muy raros de búsqueda. Because the, now that video number 80, um, it's, um, People who don't speak English understand that video better. Um, if I meet people on the street, I tell them to watch my video number 80, but here it doesn't even appear. Cuando hay, porque ya digo, mira, el número 80 de momento que es casi mi video favorito para la gente que no hable, hable inglés, casi les recomiendo de ver ese video porque tiene mucha más música. Pero mira, aquí falta. Joder. So it's time to look for alternatives. WebTorrent, some time ago, I made some videos about this tool. Upload date and Creative Commons. 
these are my videos and some more I made. Decentralized P2P but I still haven't checked that out so so busy producing videos especially the idea of that Bitcoin hashtag BTC4 actually I'm planning to make a new video um, with just two years instead of four and in relation to that topic of censorship I recommend you to watch my video mix number 77 this one y en relación con ese tema de censura eh, te recomiendo de ver este video mix número 77 eh, también con traducción español maybe later I'll paste a part of this video Tal vez a continuación voy a pegar una parte de este video. English, español. Now I want to talk about these two topics. Um, let's talk FE and intellectual property law ahora quiero hablar sobre estos dos temas um, let's talk FE y uh, la ley de la propiedad intelectual I hope you have seen uh, most of my videos especially hola que tal uh, especially the video number 64 espero que has visto la mayoría de mis videos, especialmente el video número 64, video mix, Mark K. Sargent. And if you have seen more of my videos, you know that I'm very passionate about this annoying topic of intellectual property. Y si has visto más videos de, en mi canal de YouTube, Buenos Enigma. Sabrás que soy muy apasionada sobre el tema de la propiedad intelectual. My favorite message is Innovation and freedom of expression is inhibited by the perverse law of intellectual property. Mi mensaje favorito es Innovación y libertad de expresión está inhibida por la ley perversa de la propiedad intelectual. You know, actually I, before my videos, I often put the message uh, this video is only possible thanks to Creative Commons. Antes de mis videos pongo a menudo también el mensaje este video es solo posible eh, gracias a Creative Commons. It's a little different from other many other people who put in front of their videos in the beginning the message uh, copyright um, fair use uh, like uh, excusing themselves that they use some pictures or something to create their videos or de otra manera otra gente antes en el principio de su video ponen el mensaje de Sí, que hay una ley que permite un poco de usar, un poco de algo. Eh, oh, derechos de autores, no es derecho, es prohibición. Derecho es para una persona, prohibición para, para casi, casi todo el mundo. It shouldn't be called a copyright, it should be called a copy prohibition, because the right is just for one person and uh, the prohibition for all of the rest of the people. Actually, we should prohibit the, the tire of the cars, because it's a copy of the original car, of the original wheel. En realidad, deberíamos prohibir las ruedas, porque son una copia de la rueda original. When we talk about ethics, the question of is it right or wrong 
um, many people think of the laws of the states cuando queremos hablar sobre el tema de ética si algo está bien o mal mucha gente piensa en las leyes de los estados and many laws are just designed to benefit the big companies democracy corporatocracy y muchas leyes están diseñadas para beneficiar las grandes empresas hay un remo en inglés democracy corporatocracy and Hollywood is of course the number one who benefits from that law of intellectual property copyright Hollywood is prácticamente uh, el número uno que beneficia de la ley de la propiedad intelectual y derechos de autores and now what I'm going to explain is a little bit more complicated Ahora lo que voy a explicar es un poco más, más complicado. If you create a documentary or report for the news, um, if the message not, is not the truth, it should be called mockumentary and not documentary. Si pro produces un uh, documental, o un reportaje para las noticias y sí que es y si es, no es la verdad eso debería llamarse mockumentary y no documentary um, bueno en español no, no existe me parece la, la palabra pero eh, me refiero a ese tema de la luna ¿eh? I'm referring to the moon and NASA Flat Earth, me refiero a, sí, todo el, el programa de el, eh, el teatro en el espacio, NASA, Tierra Plana, let's talk FAA. So let's talk about ethics. What is worse? Vamos a hablar sobre ética. ¿Qué es peor? To break an unjust law. And anyway, it's very difficult to, to, to define which is fair use copyright. It's peor de romper una ley injusta, de toda forma el, te, el tema de la ley de la, intelectual, de la propiedad intelectual. Es muy difícil de definir qué es uso eh, legit, legito, o como se dice, fair use en, en español, en comparación de una mentira tan quiero decir una mentira tan grande de los últimos 500 años in comparison to this big big lie the big deception the biggest lie of this last 500 years and some time ago I made a video some time ago I made several videos about that topic, different Bible versions and copyright. Hace algún tiempo hice algunos videos sobre el tema diferentes versiones de la Biblia y derechos de autores. I came to the conclusion that this perverse law of intellectual property gives incentive to counterfeit uh, the Bible versions because it must be at least 10% different. Yo he uh, lleg llegado a la conclusión que esa ley perversa de la propiedad intelectual da incentivo para falsificar las versiones de la Biblia porque tiene que ser por lo menos 10% diferente para poder registrarlo. Uh, sorry, I forgot. Um, uh, to be able to register, it must be at least 10% different.
from the original version. So sometimes the translations are a little bit better to understand, but in just uh, in uh, several cases, it's not just better. It's they took just a word, uh, a really bad word, because just it's m it must be different, and it's not easier to understand. Sí, en algunos casos sí se puede entender mejor, pero en otros otros casos eh, simplemente eh, cogieron una palabra que tiene que ser diferente, que no era para entenderlo mejor, solo porque tenía que ser diferente para poder registrarlo. So now uh, I'll paste this, uh, these videos. Ahora a continuación voy a pegar estos videos. Just one more thing I wanted to say. Uh, solo una cosita más quería decir. For example, in my last video, Mark K. Sargent says, I, uh, I'm not sure, I, I just, uh, because I'm afraid, I don't monetize uh, my videos. Um, uh, en mi último video, Mark K. Sargent dice uh, que por miedo, por el tema de copyright, uh, dice ah, que yo no, no lo pongo a moneta, monetize monet, para poner uh, anuncios en YouTube. Pero, for example, maybe that the video might be 100 minutes long and you just put one minute of uh, something which is copyrighted of another person so uh, they um, force you to monetize but not in your name but uh, you can't choose the option without uh, advertisement they they force you to put their advertisement and they get the money for the nine, 99 minutes of your video you don't get it's just what that minute so they they get the money so that you are forced to put this ad advertisement bueno suponemos que haces un, un video de 100, 100 minutos 99 minutos lo produces yo Tú, y, y solo por ejemplo tal vez un minuto es, es de derechos de autores y aunque tú quisieras ponerlo sin anuncios ellos te obligan de poner anuncios y que tú no vas a recibir ese dinero sino ellos ellos que tienen ya tienen demasiado esto ya que ya he dicho antes mira las leyes están diseñadas para Beneficiar a las grandes empresas es corporatocracy. As I said before, this, the laws are designed to, to benefit the big uh, companies. It's, it's corporatocracy, it's not democracy. Corporatocracy. Sorry for getting a little nervous, but I'm very, very passionate about this annoying topic of intellectual property. Perdonad de perder un poco los nervios, pero estoy muy apasionada sobre ese tema perverso de la propiedad intelectual. So now finally I'll paste these uh, videos about um, the Bible versions. Actually, this is uh, <laughs> actually the best example how perverse that law is. Bueno, ahora por fin voy a pegar estos vídeos de este tema de las versiones de, de la Biblia. Al final, este es eh, casi el mejor tema para demostrar la perversidad de ese, esa ley. Do you think that we need 500 different English Bibles? No, in fact, I, I mentioned uh, we have a glut. We don't have any need for any, any more. I don't think there's a good reason for why we've had the explosion of them over the past number of decades. I know what the reason is. Right. It's real simple. It's, it's, it's the fact that if you have a publishing house, you want to do a study Bible or something, which I am not a study Bible fan. Me neither. What they did is if you were a major publishing house, you didn't want to have to pay royalties to somebody else. So they all made their own translations. Right. 
There is a financial motivation to come out with all these different versions. There is. No mm -hmm. question about it. Right. No question about it. Um, does God expect the average Christian? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. Even the corruption of the word of God was going on in Paul's day. So the NIV says, unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. Oh, yeah, they do. In fact, that's why they print all these new Bibles all the time. You know why? So they can copyright them. So that if you quote from them, you have to pay them a dime. It's all, see, the Bible says the love of, money, love of money is the root of all evil. Notice, and we're supposed to somewhere hear God's voice in here. That same reading is also found in the New King James Version of the Bible. Mark chapter 10. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered the, again and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that do what? Trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. And yet the NIV says how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, it's not hard. Unless you're full of pride. Amen. It's not hard. You know what you do? You call in the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. And the same thing keeps coming out. The King James has the smallest number of syllables per word, letters per word, words per sentence. And the King James also has something called cognitive scaffolding. One of the textbooks I wrote when I was a professor at the university was called uh, Design Process and Cognitive Behavior. In that book, I talk about how people think and how they learn. But one of the ways children learn is called cognitive scaffolding. That means if I say, the Bible, King James Bible says, uh, be careful for nothing, okay? Care is a small word that has a definition. You care about something. Full, you have a full glass of milk. So a child will put those two words and they will build them together to understand what careful means. Full of care, okay? Now, if you look at the New International Version there, it will say anxious. There is no cognitive scaffolding with the word anxious because it doesn't break down because they don't use Anglo-Saxon words. So I tried to find out why none of these versions use the simple Anglo-Saxon words. And I found out that it has to do with the derivative copyright law. Okay? The derivative copyright law says, quote, to be copyrightable, um, a derivative work must be different enough from the original to be regarded as a new work and must contain a substantial amount of new material. Making minor changes or additions of little substance to a pre-existing work will not qualify the work as a new version. You have to make substantial changes in the version. So here we have the new King James. It's going to pretend that it's going to update all the King James words. For the word evil. Okay, now the word evil will cognitive scaffold for a child to devil. Okay? But they have adversity, distressing, catastrophe, calamity, difficult, harmful, terrible, and doom. I didn't put doom on there. Fat is verdant. Okay? Man is mortal. Old is elderly. Give is gratify. House is habitation. Smell becomes savor. Okay? Why did they do this? Now, there's a book called The NIV Story by Burton Gooder, and he explains why they did it. Because they can't use the King James words. They're the best words, they've already been taken, so they have to go to the thesaurus. Now, if you're doing the New American Standard, you get the first choice, but then by the time you're on to the NIV, you're on the third choice, and by the time you're down to the New King James, you can't take anybody else's words, and you're using these ridiculous words like verdant for fat, okay? <laughs> but I think um, what, when people say the King James is hard to understand, they're really misrepresenting how someone understands the Bible. Uh, Psalm 25 says the meek I want to do a review here of the Quick Scan King James Bible. This thing is put out by the Berean Bible Publishers. And uh, it's an interesting new twist on Bible perversion. I'm going to show you here what I mean. Here we have the Holy Bible, Complete Authorized King James Version in Quick Scan, Berean Bible Publishers. There's the address, the website. Here's what the outside of it looks like. Okay, you can see that. Let me show you some of the stuff in here. <clears throat> Copyright. 
The reprinting of any parts of the main content and the additions to this Bible without the author's permission is forbidden. Notice it says additions to this Bible. Okay, not e, you know, additions, ah, additions. They are adding things, in other words. You're going to see what things are added here in a minute. But very interesting because here I have my Cambridge, my good old Cambridge Bible. Okay, rights in the authorized King James Version of the Bible are vested in the crown. Does it say anything about uh, you can't copy it, you can't, you know, no part of it can be copied or anything? Uh, no, doesn't say anything about that. The only thing that's quote-unquote copyrighted about this Bible here is the fact that it's a Cambridge. All right, you can't print your own King James Bible and put Cambridge on it. That's what's going on there. But this one because they changed the text, now they can say this thing is copyrighted. Interesting. But let me show you here what they do with what the quick scan scam is. How quick scan benefits you. Quick scan words. By reading the bold words only, you will reduce reading time by up to two thirds, it says. You simply eliminate the necessity of reading about half the words, now look at this, words that can be left out without changing the overall meaning of the text. Words that can be left out without changing the overall meaning of the text. Remember that as I show you in the actual text how they pervert the scripture. But it says here, a consumer of large chunks of you know, but you eliminate uh, left to right, big head or big problem as many have in reading, and also a consumer of large chunks of your valuable time. So reading the Bible is not part of valuable time. That's a problem. Quick scan also increases the understanding of most readers. Three designations for the devil. One is Lucifer in Isaiah 14, and the other is Satan. When the Lord says, "Get thee behind me," Satan addressed him personally. And the third one is, is a generic term, simply means, or simply says, devil. All right, devil is translated from the Greek diablos, which means a slanderer or an accuser. Satan is a transliteration. It's not a translation. It's simply taken from the text and taken over into English. It is a Hebrew word because Satan shows up in the, in the Old Testament time and time again and sometimes it is translated, and sometimes it's not. And sometimes it's translated and says adversary, or what have you like that, but then sometimes not. So it is the name of the devil, Satan. But then there is another name that shows up in the Bible, and that name is Lucifer. In Isaiah chapter number 14, the, name, the word Lucifer is a Latin word. And that word means a shining one or a bright one, or literally Lucifer means a bearer of light. Now, in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 14 and verse number 12, the Hebrew word Hillel shows up one time in the Old Testament. One time right there, Isaiah chapter 14. That in itself is remarkable because it shows that the Holy Spirit is giving you that word and associating that word with this fallen creature. Lucifer. And in Isaiah 14, it's talking about his fall from heaven. And uh, the big, doc, the big, uh, the big uh, argument today in the uh, occult world and now coming into the Christian world, and I use the word Christian very lightly, is that Lucifer is not that bad angel that he's been portrayed to be, but rather he's a good angel and the occult world has always held to this, but now it's coming over into the Christian world. And now this is only getting the foot in the door. The idea is to get you to accept something or premise. Once you accept that, they build upon it. And that's where the problem comes in. Last week we brought up the NIV and some of the places, the NIV, the translations that it's made. And uh, the reason I did that is because the NIV is essentially the granddaddy of all of these new versions as far as usage is concerned. It's more widely distributed and used than uh, any other translation outside of the Bible. 
You know, the way I said that. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> the NIV is, is the official uh, Bible of, uh, uh, I guess, I don't know if they officially declare it to be a Southern Baptist church, but a lot of people in there use it, but a lot of fundamental Baptists use it too, and a lot of other people use it. I thought you might be interested in some statistics. Now, I'm not one that's, uh, you know, statistics will burn you up and wear you out, but uh, as you, I don't know if you realize it or not, but the NIV has changed considerably since its first incarnation and to the point to where it is today, which obviously, of course, means that if it has changed up to this point, it will continue to change. And uh, here is a, um, here is some of the statistics that uh, we start with. As, as far as NIV of uh, 1984 up until the present, only 60% of the original NIV has been retained. A full 40% has been changed. Uh, so people say, Brother Hovind, why do you use the King James? Man, it's old English, nobody can understand it, it's hard to read. I understand all that. And as a brand new Christian, saved out of the Methodist Church, uh, I, my mom gave me every kind of new Bible version there was. When well, a new one came out, hey son, you're going to love this one. So I've got a huge collection of all the Bible versions. When I was 16, I had the reviled substandard perversion of the Bible. It's here someplace, my original copy. But uh, I was reading that, going to church, going to this little independent, temperamental, fundamental, right-wing, radical, chicken-eating Baptist church. And the preacher was banging on the pulpit saying the Bible's the Word of God. And I was making notes in my revised standard version. And after a couple of months, he said, Brother Hovind, you've been a Christian a few months now. Uh, it's time you get a Bible. I said, I got a Bible. He said, no, you need a real Bible. I was offended, okay? I thought, well, I got a Bible. I've been making notes. I've been reading it an hour a day. What do you mean? He said, well, there's real problems with that one. So why King James? It's been 33, 37 years now as a Christian of you know, studying this topic. Why? Look at Psalms chapter 12. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. What does the word them refer back to in that verse? Thou shalt preserve them. Preserve what? His words. He's promising he's going to preserve his words, right? How about NIV? The words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a furnace of clay, purified seven times. O Lord, you will keep us safe and protect us from such people forever. Is that saying the same thing? I mean, I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. It looks to me like somebody's wrong about this one, okay? What does this mean? Keep us from such people. What people is it talking about? There are very serious differences between these Bible versions. We've got a book. I don't know if I have it here. It's in our library. It, the guy sent it to me. It took me six months to figure out what the title said. I read it. I said, what? Well, I went out of something else. Every time I look at the book, I said, what is this? The title was, Things That Are Different Are Not The Same. I thought, well, duh, why would you title a book like that? You know, things that are different are not the same. And then I thought, wow, these Bible versions are definitely different, so you can't say they're the same. There are, as far as I understand it, 151 English translations of the Bible right now available. The law is you cannot get a copyright and therefore protect your work and therefore get more money unless you have 10% different from the original. Are there 151 different ways to say each of the verses in the Bible? At some point, you're going to have to stop saying it the right way and say it the wrong way just to make it different, just to get your copyright, just to get your money. Love of money, root of all evil. Here's a quick story. We could take an hour on this one, but right after the time of Christ, I believe the devil wants to take over the church. I believe the devil wants to take over this church one person at a time. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. Close your window. Go back inside your house. Go back inside right now. I am inside. We have a real chance at this new world order. An order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of 
the UN's founders. After 1989, When I first heard this flat earth subject, I dismissed it without even giving it a second thought. But more recently, at the beginning of 2015, I ran across a few flat earth videos again. And while looking into the fake moon photos circulating around, I saw that people were claiming that the images from earth from space were fake as well. Pretty soon the flat earth subject became viral online. And after looking at the Apollo missions one night and coming to the conclusion that they were nothing more than a huge con game, it jarred my memory about something. And for a very specific reason, I decided to look deeply into the Flat Earth without just dismissing it blindly as so many do. Why did I look into it this time? Well, I do pray for knowledge and wisdom and discernment, but maybe the recent Apollo footage I watched helped. However, I live near a very large lake, Lake Ontario, and I happen to remember going to the beach as a kid and looking across the lake and seeing New York State coast off in the distance. I never ever thought anything about it ever, except I remember it being there when I went to the beach. Now, I've been to that beach a hundred times over the years, and once this topic gained more prominence in early 2015, the first video I saw explained the curvature of the Earth and what it's supposed to be in inches per mile. And it resonated with me because I remember that I could see clear across the lake to the other coast, something that broke all the sphere Earth rules. So with NASA fakery on my mind and the memory of seeing this coastline that supposedly was too far below the horizon for me to be able to see it due to the curvature of the Earth, I re-examined the Flat Earth Theory. And as unbelievable as it seemed, it started to make a lot of sense, especially since I did distinctly remember being able to see that far coast basically any time I was at my local beach. And as I've said, I've been there hundreds of times over the years. But even so, I went back to the beach recently and stood at the shore. I looked south and guess what? I could see the New York State coastline just like I remember. Now I googled the distance and it was approximately 36 miles. I learned what the curvature of the Earth is supposed to be exactly at that distance. And according to the people that believe in the sphere, and I found out that the coast should have been buried below my ability to see it by almost 900 feet. That part of the New York State coast had a top elevation of less than 300 feet. So that left at least a huge 600 foot discrepancy. And even more because I could see some of the height of the far shore. Was something really wrong with the reality that they've been selling us ever since we were born? Well, I ended up becoming a little fixated on proving or disproving the concept. And at first, I truly thought disproving the Flat Earth would be rather easy. I thought there had to be a reasonable explanation why I could see so far beyond the so-called curve barrier. I learned about light refraction and superior mirages. I learned about perspective and horizons. I learned about how our eyes work. I viewed dozens of similar experiences on YouTube. I listened to experts and people who thought they had logical but spherical explanations. In fact, I tried for a few months to debunk the concept and just couldn't. The more I looked into it, the more sense it made and the less likely that the sphere model we've been spoon-fed since birth was a reality. It's just flat out wrong. And as more people shared their experiences and proofs online, it only added to my growing, pretty much unwavering belief that the world is not what we've been told. And learning about how our eyes work and how perspective work helps a lot with understanding sunrises and sunsets and ships disappearing hull first at sea and other supposed sphere earth proofs. I can't say for certain what shape the earth is or how big it is, or if there's an Antarctic ring or a barrier beyond it, or if it's an infinite plane. Maybe everything we theorize is not complete. There are so many possibilities that it blows the mind. And the flat earth has no real complete standard model because it's all based on us finding out things for ourselves. We agree on the facts and certain basics, but the rest is only hypothetical even if it seemingly makes sense. And as the evidence mounts for both the flat earth and against the sphere, I wanted to create a special place where folks can learn and share what they've learned with other supporters. Differences of opinion are certainly gonna come forth and should be expressed openly. But remember that the goal of my videos and their corresponding threads is to provide the opportunity to use each of us to learn and grow in any area that any of us has a problem in. If there is a thing you can't understand, then ask. Someone will have an opinion and we can go from there. If you have a point to make against what is considered an accepted flat earth fact, please provide any relevant links or supporting proofs or videos. I am currently under the impression that the entire space program, even low Earth orbit and all that is there, is really just a sleight of hand trick by a group of illusionists that have swindled the public, the governments of the world, the media, and us into believing a lie. Everybody, a small group of corporations and cabals have almost complete control over the entire financial, educational, high-level governmental and media systems, leaving it up to real armchair scientists and normal people that can critically think and recreate experiments themselves to independently prove or just prove any accepted line of thought about our reality. Look, I ain't the smartest man on the flat earth, but I ain't no dummy. 
I'm educated, and I never, ever questioned or ever thought of an alternative to a sphere Earth until this year. It never entered my mind to question this part of our reality at all, ever. But now I question everything. I'm a Christian, and I think I see the big picture. Thanks, Thanks for watching my video. If you'd like to see more proof against the heliocentric model and proof against the sphere, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if there's anything you disagree with, make sure you leave a note below explaining exactly why. Remember folks, follow the golden rule. God loves you. We'll talk soon. At first they dedicated broadcast channels to calling the dome builders out, demanding answers, and ran them day and night. At the end of each cycle, the words kept repeating, we know. But arrogance ebbs at patience, and their demands were met with silence, which was taken as blatant dismissal. This fueled their ambition even more. The people withdrew all their efforts from breaching the outer barrier and formed a new plan. If the creators were not going to submit, then they would build a bridge and meet them at the gates. So a building was designed, but to call it a building was to call the pyramids a sand castle. It was the greatest structure ever conceived, at least to them. It was to be over 30 miles wide and hundreds of miles high, enough to reach the dome ceiling itself, where they would meet the builders face to face. They abandoned nature completely and pushed aside ecologic systems to accomplish their goal. They cannibalized entire mountain ranges, which they used to admire and love to acquire the raw material for the awesome structure. The work crews built with flawless precision, and it was obvious that it was going to succeed. A bridge to the edge of the sky itself. The work would only pause long enough for the mighty armies below to look up and yell, We come for you! So loudly that on a clear day you could actually feel the dome shake. And the creators, faced with their first great challenge, decided to start again. And the people were changed, their language fragmented so that the builders couldn't continue. The tower was dismantled, their technology removed and forgotten, and the people scattered. A new group was introduced to the dome, divided in every way imaginable so that unity was next to impossible, and everything slowed down. Languages evolved and devolved into other dialects, and the languages produced text which produced different forms of culture, and some amazing things began to happen, the most important of which was the arts. The dome builders saw the artistic pool develop into several distinct forms, everything drawn in any medium on a flat surface, Everything molded that took on a three-dimensional shape, everything that produced music, all things that make up the human form and motion, and all the written works. Pictures, sculptures, music, dance, literature, the arts. Driven by passion, it is the very essence of what is good in humanity. Once this was recognized, all dome methods put in place were to cultivate and enhance this process. Land masses were adjusted with geology and temperature to support every kind of terrain with mountains, rivers, oceans, plains, forests, jungles, deserts, all of it stunning, all of it stimulating the human mind, nourishing it. And the modifications continued with seemingly endless shades of weather. The sky was overhauled, a moon added, and layers upon layers upon layers of stars, so that one day, when the people were able to see further than their own eyes, there would still be something new to see. And the arts flourished, but there was a cost. The languages and division of cultures had put the population at odds, and wars were raging at regular intervals. The dome builders debated if the price was too high. Plans were drawn up to make more changes, until they noticed that the arts thrived 
even through the worst of conflicts, producing grace and beauty despite their burning world. It was wonderful and terrible at the same time, and the debate outside the barrier continued to intensify until a majority spoke out and said, this world is a creative force and we must see what it leads to. The barrier must be hidden at all costs. So the globe model was put into the population and both science and religion adapted to it. The arts grabbed onto it like a new drug the creative minds of the world exploding with new concepts. Their universe was now infinite, and the rules changed. Science then led to science fiction, which opened up everything else. Books, pictures, sculptures, dance, and music, all reaching deep into space. Decade after decade of wonderful possibilities, rising above the ashes that were at their feet. And it's not just the artists, it's everyone. You affect others, who affect others, who inspire others, who build it, paint it, sculpt it, sing it, who then put it up on a pedestal and hold it under the light and say, this is a piece of who we are. And for every one of them, there are hundreds of others who, for whatever reason, were unable to express the songs and images and stories that are in their heads. Imagination is far more important than knowledge because it is limitless. It is your shield, your sword against the cruelty of destructive forces. There are those right now who live in chaos, whose life is surrounded by a swirling nightmare from which they think they'll never escape. These are the true warriors of the world, and they are far braver than me. I am humbled by those who suffer the most. Know that mountains were built for you. Oceans were built for you. All of this was built for you, your struggles and your trials by fire. It may be today, it may be tomorrow, but one day, the curtain will close and this stage will be struck and when the dust settles no matter where you are right now you'll see the big picture and have new eyes and you will be shown what wonder really is and as you leave this most magnificent of theaters heading towards the next my hope is that you'll pause look back at the stage and say I was actually in it, you know, right there in the thick of things, and it was a sight to see, because it really is a hell of a ride. Imagine what the next one will be like. Mucha gente económicamente. 
I am sure that this can help many people economically. Ich bin sicher, dass diese Idee vielen Leuten uh, finanziell helfen kann. Y da motivación para aprender Bitcoin. And give motivation to learn about Bitcoin. Und Motivation geben, oh, über Bitcoin zu lernen. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy bajo, económico. At the moment the price of Bitcoin is very low, economic. Im Moment ist der Preis von Bitcoin sehr tief. Sería el momento ideal para invertir. Hoy es el 15 de abril 2015. Would be the ideal moment to invest. Today is April 15th, 2015. Es wäre der ideale Moment zu investieren. Heute ist der 15. April 2015. El 27 de marzo 2015 he publicado en mi canal de YouTube Vanos Enigma el primer video sobre hashtag BTC4 explicando cómo me vino esta idea. On March 27th of 2015, um, I published my for the first video about hashtag BTC4 in my channel YouTube Vanos Enigma, explaining how I got the idea. Am 27. März 2015 habe ich in meinem YouTube-Channel Vanos Enigma den ersten, den ersten Video über Hashtag BTC4 veröffentlicht und äh, erzählt, erklärt, wie ich diese Idee bekommen habe. La idea consiste principalmente en lo siguiente. The idea mainly consists in the following. Die idea besteht hauptsächlich en folgenden, folgenden. Imprimir en direcciones de Bitcoin en papel. Diez o mínimo diez o mejor cien. To print Bitcoin directions in paper, at least 10 or better 100. Bitcoin adressen in Papier ausdrucken, um, minimum 10 or besser gleich 100. Y luego poner en cada dirección de Bitcoin una pequeña cantidad de Bitcoin. And then put in every Bitcoin direction a little amount of Bitcoin. Und dann in jede Bitcoin Adresse eine kleine Summe von Bitcoin transferieren. Y la próxima vez, cuando otra vez ves una persona por la calle pidiendo dinero, and the next time uh, you see again a person begging for money on the street. Und das nächste Mal, wenn du wieder eine Person auf der Straße betteln siehst. Y para tus amigos y amigas. And for your friends, of course. Und für deine Freunde natürlich. O tal vez eh, de propina en un restaurante. O maybe a tip in a restaurant. O da trinkgeld en un restaurant. Bueno, a la hora de imprimir también 
copiar y guardar las llaves privadas de Bitcoin, de direcciones de Bitcoin. Or when you print the Bitcoin addresses, um, copy and save the private keys of the Bitcoin addresses, of course. Wenn man die Bitcoin Adressen druckt, auch die, uh, auch die privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Address Schlüsseln, um, kopieren und speichern. Y a la hora de distribuir las direcciones de Bitcoin, escribir la fecha, por ejemplo, hoy es el 15 de abril 2015, escribir la fecha, más plus cuatro años, eh, igual 15 de abril 2019. And then in the moment when you distribute uh, the Bitcoin addresses, you write the date, for example, today, April 15th, 2015, plus, plus four years uh, is April 15th, 2019. Und dann in dem Moment, wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen verteilt, auf das Papier schreiben, das heutige Datum, zum Beispiel 15. April 2015, plus vier Jahre ist gleich 15.04.2019. Luego vas a explicar a la gente, mira, esta es la llave privada. Tú y yo la tengo, la tienes. Si no quitas, transfieres este dinero de Bitcoin eh, en estos cuatro años, yo lo vuelvo a tener, tener o sacar. Then you explain to the people, look, this is the private key. I have it and you have it. If you don't take this money, Bitcoin, out of this account, I will take it out in this, um, in these four years, at the end of these four years. Und dann erklärst du den Leuten, ciao, das ist der private Schlüssel. Um, ich und du haben diesen privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Schlüssel. Wenn du bis Ende dieser vier Jahre das Geld Bitcoin nicht raus tust, transfer, äh, dann hole ich es zurück. De esta forma das más motivación a la gente para empezar a aprender cómo funciona Bitcoin. This way you give more motivation to the people to learn how the technology of Bitcoin functions. Auf diese Weise gibst du mehr Motivation den Leuten zu lernen, wie die Technologie von Bitcoin funktioniert. In mein Video an diesen When I first heard this flat earth subject, I dismissed it without even giving it a second thought. But more recently, at the beginning of 2015, I ran across a few flat earth videos again. And while looking into the fake moon photos circulating around, I saw that people were claiming that the images from earth from space were fake as well. Pretty soon the flat earth subject became viral online. And after looking at the Apollo missions one night and coming to the conclusion that they were nothing more than a huge con game, it jarred my memory about something. And for a very specific reason, I decided to look deeply into the flat earth without just dismissing it blindly as so many do. Why did I look into it this time? Well, I do pray for knowledge and wisdom and discernment, but maybe the recent Apollo footage I watched helped. However, I live near a very large lake, Lake Ontario, and I happen to remember going to the beach as a kid and looking across the lake and seeing New York State coast off in the distance. I never ever thought anything about it ever, except I remember it being there when I went to the beach. Now, I've been to that beach a hundred times over the years, 
And once this topic gained more prominence in early 2015, the first video I saw explained the curvature of the Earth and what it's supposed to be in inches per mile. And it resonated with me because I remember that I could see clear across the lake to the other coast, something that broke all the sphere Earth rules. So with NASA fakery on my mind and the memory of seeing this coastline that supposedly was too far below the horizon for me to be able to see it due to the curvature of the Earth, I re-examined the Flat Earth Theory. And as unbelievable as it seemed, it started to make a lot of sense, especially since I did distinctly remember being able to see that far coast basically any time I was at my local beach. And as I've said, I've been there hundreds of times over the years. But even so, I went back to the beach recently and stood at the shore. I looked south and guess what? I could see the New York State coastline just like I remember. Now I googled the distance and it was approximately 36 miles. I learned what the curvature of the Earth is supposed to be exactly at that distance. And according to the people that believe in the sphere, and I found out that the coast should have been buried below my ability to see it by almost 900 feet. That part of the New York State coast had a top elevation of less than 300 feet. So that left at least a huge 600 foot discrepancy. And even more because I could see some of the height of the far shore. Was something really wrong with the reality that they've been selling us ever since we were born? Well, I ended up becoming a little fixated on proving or disproving the concept. And at first, I truly thought disproving the flat Earth would be rather easy. I thought there had to be a reasonable explanation why I could see so far beyond the so-called curve barrier. I learned about light refraction and superior mirages. I learned about perspective and horizons. I learned about how our eyes work. I viewed dozens of similar experiences on YouTube. I listened to experts and people who thought they had logical but spherical explanations. In fact, I tried for a few months to debunk the concept and just couldn't. The more I looked into it, the more sense it made and the less likely that the sphere model we've been spoon-fed since birth was a reality. It's just flat out wrong. And as more people shared their experiences and proofs online, it only added to my growing, pretty much unwavering belief that the world is not what we've been told. And learning about how our eyes work and how perspective work helps a lot with understanding sunrises and sunsets and ships disappearing hull first at sea and other supposed sphere earth proofs. I can't say for certain what shape the earth is or how big it is, or if there's an Antarctic ring or a barrier beyond it, or if it's an infinite plane. Maybe everything we theorize is not complete. There are so many possibilities that it blows the mind. And the flat earth has no real complete standard model because it's all based on us finding out things for ourselves. We agree on the facts and certain basics, but the rest is only hypothetical even if it seemingly makes sense. And as the evidence mounts for both the flat earth and against the sphere, I wanted to create a special place where folks can learn and share what they've learned with other supporters. Differences of opinion are certainly gonna come forth and should be expressed openly. But remember that the goal of my videos and their corresponding threads is to provide the opportunity to use each of us to learn and grow in any area that any of us has a problem in. If there is a thing you can't understand, then ask. Someone will have an opinion and we can go from there. If you have a point to make against what is considered an accepted flat earth fact, please provide any relevant links or supporting proofs or videos. I am currently under the impression that the entire space program, even low Earth orbit and all that is there, is really just a sleight of hand trick by a group of illusionists that have swindled the public, the governments of the world, the media, and us into believing a lie. Everybody, a small group of corporations and cabals have almost complete control over the entire financial, educational, high-level governmental and media systems, leaving it up to real armchair scientists and normal people that can critically think and recreate experiments themselves to independently prove or disprove prove any accepted line of thought about our reality. Look, I ain't the smartest man on the flat earth, but I ain't no dummy. I'm educated and I never ever questioned or ever thought of an alternative to a sphere earth until this year. It never entered my mind to question this part of our reality at all, ever. But now I question everything. I'm a Christian and I think I see the big picture. Thanks, Thanks for watching my video. If you'd like to see more proof against the heliocentric model and proof against the sphere, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if there's anything you disagree with, Make sure you leave a note below explaining exactly why. Remember, folks, follow the golden rule. God loves you. We'll talk soon.